in accordance with the open meeting law, this, the board states for the record that this meeting is being recorded by NORCAM and may be recorded by other local media. Please rise for the pledge. Thank you everyone for uh, joining us for this auto cycle meeting. Uh, we have one topic on the agenda this evening and um, we're going to do that in open session and then we're going to enter into executive session uh, shortly following our first discussion. The town administrator just needs a minute to uh, get to his seat. But the topic tonight is to discuss the potential real estate opportunity at 217 Main Street turn it over to the town administrator and go from there. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, is uh, my voice coming through all right on the uh, microphone? Everyone in the room too? Good. Um, so as has been discussed in previous meetings, so we've been conducting a, an evaluation relative to uh, the suitability of a particular property here in town, that being the property at 217 Main Street uh, to serve uh, municipal purpose um, or purposes. and. Um, We've been doing so after uh, becoming aware that the property was for sale, and um, I, I think it's fair to say that we've identified that uh, the, the, the building could most certainly address a series of municipal needs uh, for the town, as I've mentioned before, be they public safety or public works, either direct or related services in those departments, as well as the potential for um, some uh, office space at the front of the building. So uh, there is uh, an opportunity in this building um, for, uh, in this property for us to achieve some needs um, and to address, I should say, to address some needs that we've been talking about. Um, maybe not necessarily on the timeline that we were expecting, a little more quickly than that, uh, but I think that we're, we're, we're fortunate that we do have an opportunity. And so really, um, I think that the feeling was by having the first part of the conversation was to um, recognize and establish that the board feels that that's the direction that uh, we should pursue. Um, one of the things that I've mentioned, um, uh, or that we have discussed, I should say, internally is um, the fact that uh, this is a single property that we're looking at. And we've done some review to try to determine what we think is the case, which is, is this a unique property? Um, and when I say we think, it's because most of us have a pretty good working knowledge of the community, including the board members. And I think that our instinct was that this was, in fact, a unique property. Um, but in fact, uh, we've done some review, and I've provided the board this evening a report of the assessor, which um, explains her opinion that, in fact, this is a unique property after doing the uh, evaluation. And um, I, I won't go too far into the details, but um, she conducted an analysis of the Main Street Corridor, which is the geographic location we've been looking at here, um, identified that there were two properties that were um, that, that may have been similar, uh, but upon further review of those properties, um, they, um, they, they don't provide the combination of location, size, and building construction that, um, that we believe would be needed to address the needs I identified earlier. Um, so before the board this evening, for the public portion is a, uh, a potential vote to make a determination relative to the uniqueness of this property. And if the board were to make such a determination, uh, my recommendation would be to continue to a deliberation relative to, uh, if it so desires, making a potential offer on the property. Would you like to hear from Mrs. Carboni? We, we can maybe ask Ms. Carboni to give a brief summary of her, her work. I think I've mostly summarized it, but... Um, Debbie, you can sit at the table if you'd like to, that's fine. Side of the a lot Good evening, uh, Debbie Carboni. Mike did uh, pretty much touch base on all of what I looked at. We kept it with, I kept it within the HB zoned area because that's where the subject property is located. Uh, with that being said, to find another piece of property that is exactly the same 
is impossible. So I did find some with similar characteristics, but that's all we found. Making 217 a very unique piece of property. It has access to Main Street and also a, a potential onto a second egress and exit, which makes it even that much more unique than any other property in the town in HB zoned. So with that being said, uh, that's th those were my findings for 217 Main Street and the rest of the dialogue in the in the document. Anyone have any questions for Ms. Carboni? Yeah, I, I will say I mean I may not know the town as well as others, but the, I definitely believe that properties extremely unique especially for what we believe our uses yes. can be uh, what our immediate need uses can take place if we acquire this building and I think that's what to me determines why it's so unique uh, is really the uses so um, and I do hope we, we get to the opportunity tonight to have the motion and, and vote on it but I don't know how any of the other board members feel if anybody feels that it isn't unique but yes if they just made that, that Ms. Carbon, just for the folks at home, you mentioned it's HB zone. If you could maybe yes. explain what that is. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. It's highway business zone. So throughout the town, you always have to have certain zoned areas. The zoned areas dictate a lot of your, your building, if you will, what can be constructed within that zoned area. So in HB, you have a parameter that you know you have to have 165 foot frontage you have to have you know certain setbacks it has to be a certain size uh with that being said that's why i stuck m just to the hb zone so that it it would qualify and i do agree chairman prisco that for the needs of the town this property and what it offers makes it unique in itself, in my opinion. Mrs. Manupelli, please. We would be able to work with what's already existing there for office space as well as any other kind of maybe public safety use that might be being considered there. So it's not tearing it down, it's already built. At least the bones of it are already built too. So Correct, and that was one when researching the properties to find like-kind properties to compare to this, it, if we came across another 2.8 acre parcel, you may have to tear that building down. So you're not only in it for destruction, but you're also in it for construction. That also includes the interior. I mean, maybe we found a building that somewhat similar but already has an interior this is essentially a shell that has the right height ceiling heights and structure type that we were looking for for many options for the town and that's again i think another reason why i mean we don't have to now pay for the cost to tear it apart it's essentially a shell now uh, once we acquire it so good to see jim yes one thing I do feel important to add, just more for the public who may be watching, is I think that all of us involved in evaluating this property and bringing this information to the board tonight recognize that the property will need some sort of uh, alterations or outfitting within it. Um, it is a, a certainly, I, I believe we all feel strongly, a solid shell of a building um, at minimum, um, and probably more than that, particularly a factor in the office space. but. You know, in, in the interest of full transparency, we all also feel that there will need to be some improvements made to the building. <coughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? I just, just want to point out to the public, who seen, we've all seen the inside of it, and the public has it, and this was really an open slate on the inside of the gate. And what you just said, Mr. Chairman, really doesn't even do it justice. It's, it's literally, I don't know how high the ceilings are in there, maybe 20, 30 foot high? They're 20. 20? Okay. According to my records. And it's wide open. You can cut it up. Any there's, there's stuff for, you can put town storage in there. You can put, I mean, you put anything you want in there. It really gives you a lot of options. It's not like it's cut up right now where you got to shoehorn things in there. You can divide this thing up any way you want. I think that's important, too, that 
Um, well, it's not already retrofitted. And either. I think the nice thing about the building as well is we don't have to do it all at once. It's certainly a building we could phase in di different uses at a time rather than have to have a huge outflow of money. Once we acquire the building, we can take our time and, and do a few things at a time as we can afford them. So there's no other discussion. Mr. O'Leary. Uh, I, I separate this into two different issues. One, you know, the uniqueness of the property itself and, you know, if the board were take a position which we haven't yet as far as uh, you know, making an offer of purchasing um, to try and purchase the property you know does this fall into the unique category you know, to me that's yes back to the other question in relation to you know should we be doing this in the timing right do we have a game plan as to how we're going to approach it that's a whole other set of issues that we haven't determined as of yet uh, but knowing that uh, time is of the essence because obviously the property owner has put it up for sale and is looking for a uh, ready buyer sooner rather than later, then the, the board has to make a determination, you know, rather quickly. So we've got a couple of big decisions to make. Oh, yeah. you know, uh, one is, you know, are we going to put an offer in and do we have a game plan and what is it going to be and how are we going to pay for it? Uh, and uh, two is if we do have an interest, then we have to go this, this route here in order to do it on a timely basis and does it fall into this proper category as being unique and for me, it does fall into the, the category as far as being unique. You know, as far as what are we going to do, I'm still, uh, the jury's still out for me. But we'll discuss that later, I guess. Okay. Agreed. So we'll take a motion then, if we don't have any more discussion. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, I move to determine that due to its location on Main Street, building construction type, Building size and layout, combined garage, office, and other space and availability, the 217 Main Street satisfies the Town of North Reading's unique requirements for the acquisition of real estate, and that advertising for proposals from the owners of other properties will not benefit the town. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Schultz. Any more discussion? So just to make sure everyone's clear, listening at home, this isn't a motion to acquire the building. It's a just a motion. To, um, to make sure we identify it as a unique property. That's all we're doing here. It allows us to go into the next phase, which is to make the discussion about what we could do for uses in this building and maybe discuss the possibility of making an offer. Correct, Mr. Gilberto? Uh, I think that the, the issue of submitting the offer is the key mm, component of any further discussion from the from that standpoint, um, if we were going to continue to have discussion about the use of the property, um, some of that may need to take place, obviously, in open session. That's fine. But I just want to make sure people at home understand a very clear on what this motion means. Sure. It's not to acquire the building. That's correct. Yeah, I just th want to make that clear. This is simply a declaration uh, that, it, that it is a unique property meeting our unique requirements. Okay. So I have a motion, second. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Unanimous. Thank you. I think it, the next step is we can um, go into executive session then to have the next discussion, or is there something else in open session? Uh, if, the move, if we're moving to considering an offer to be made, um, then my recommendation would be to go into executive session for that because we will be discussing the value of the property. Mr. O'Leary. Just uh, were we planning on uh, further informing the public as to what we see the, the potential uses for this property. I, I, you know, we may have had some, as we did the walkthroughs and stuff, but I don't know that in public we've actually uh, outlined what we see the potential uses of the, of the building to be, whether it be in the near term or mm -hmm. in the long term. And I thought we did, but maybe I'm happy to elaborate uh, yeah uh, I think we can have that discussion to Absolutely. the considerations that are being looked at so I've talked about public works and public safety but to, to, to put it into more detail uh, for those who have been following any budget discussions over the past few years we've talked a lot about the need for a presence uh, in uh, for the fire department on the west side of town along the main street corridor um, so that would be uh, an obvious um, use that would fit this property given its construction 
um, it, it's uh, garage access uh, and its location. So certainly for um, uh, potential fire department use. Um, we've had some conversation about whether or not um, the vehicle maintenance, and I use that in a broad term for all departments, could be sited in this property. I think we believe that there's sufficient space to do that as well. Um, and again, I, I mean for all departments, public safety, public works, or otherwise. Uh, and then um, also using, using the front office space at the property that there is a strong potential for some of the administrative functions of the um, fire department, um, the other public safety departments, including health and building, uh, and the administrative um, and other non-operational components of the public works department. So um, certainly we're not here with any sorts of decisions being made, but in terms of the visioning type discussions, I think that that's what, um, you know, what we think may be some possibilities for this site to give a little more detail to it. Any Stolari anymore? Uh, just in relation to um, the administration's recommendation for financing um, purchase and renovations, So from, from our standpoint, the finance director and I have had some limited conversation with regard to uh, our options. To run through what those options would be, um, they could be a, uh, a cash outlay, um, which obviously would be um, a significant undertaking, um, it, whether it be from our available reserves, um, uh, certified free cash, um, or um, our uh, proceeds from the sale of town-owned land, which I think we're all familiar with, uh, namely um, the Berry property, uh, which was sold last December, uh, resulting in uh, between 19 and $20 million coming into the town. So that's one alternative, and I think it's probably the alternative that we would be most closely looking at for a recommendation. The other alternatives, obviously, are the more traditional methods of um, borrowing. Um, and borrowing over a term 20 or 30 years, for example. Um, and of course, when you start talking about that, the borrowing could be within our existing um, tax levy or outside of the tax levy. Um, I think as we sit here right now, um, the, the conversations and the, and the discussion are focused more on the use of proceeds from the sale of town owned land to fund this. Uh, and I will note there's been a lot of conversation about the eligible uses for that. Um, and the use of the, that funding is um, not, um, we're not authorized or able to use it for operating costs, we're able to use it for debt service um, or for capital acquisition, which this would in either scenario fall into. So I think that's the, the thinking in terms of how this would be financed. Again, it would obviously be a decision that would be uh, finalized by the, uh, the board and obviously approved through town meeting, uh, but that would be what I expect to be the recommendation. Mr. Masseri? It's clear to me that the facility itself could be used uh, by the town for a number of different reasons. And uh, it, one of the things, I th if we go forward with this, I think we have to look at it as we're acquiring a structure. And then we're going to spend additional funds in that structure depending on what we decide to put in it, you know, whether it is the a West Side fire station or uh, an extension to the DBW or a maintenance area or office area, extended office area, or for something else we haven't even thought about. Right. right. So I, I think we need to make it clear that our any action that we take associated with acquiring the facility is a timing issue that we haven't well thought out in, uh, in detail what we would finally use that building for or how many uses that building would have and what the cost of setting it up would be. I agree, that's why I was saying earlier, I believe the building has the uniqueness to it where we could acquire it and even just maybe focus on the fire side first and then move our way through the building as we know where our needs need to be we still are in the process of doing that building study and you know again anything if we acquire this building it's just going to take time so I think it'll all evolve but I I certainly think 
we don't have to have 100% of the solution to what we're going to put in that building at the time we, if we acquire it. Uh, I just don't think, I mean, I think there's a little common sense to it in, you know, acquiring it because we believe there are some immediate needs, but not 100% of the building will be, I think, laid out and exactly identified what we use it for. That'll come over time. But I certainly think it's a nice position to be in. And the other question I had, maybe this for the finance director, you know, we, let's just say we use some of the JT Berry funds to acquire the building, but we could also leverage the investment of the JT Berry funds to pay any debt for any kind of build outs we may do in, in the interior of the building. Is that something that we could consider? I know we use it as part of our revenue plan today, but as revenues are increasing in other areas in town, especially from the new growth, that would this be a potential option? I'll defer to the finance director. The answer to your question is yes, but it wouldn't be directly through the investment earnings um, from the money from the sale of town-owned land. What we would have to do is let that money flow into free cash and appropriate free cash. So it would not be part of our revenue plan. It would be revenue above and beyond um, our estimated receipts, and therefore then we would have to appropriate free cash, okay. as that is a general fund revenue source. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Michael. Mr. Masseri. Liz, is there a way of taking earnings from that from the very money that we have and putting it into, rather than let it flow into free cash, putting it in some account, could we do that? Uh, I can look into that. Um, there is a potential that we may be able to do that. We may need to appropriate the funds um, uh, similar to what we did at June Town Meeting uh, to offset the FY19 operating budget, we appropriated them to the Capital Improvement Stabilization Fund, and then that fund transfers out. Stabilization funds um, retain their own interest, so there may be a mechanism that we can segregate the interest just from um, that investment. I bring it up because we have a history of utilizing our free cash as part of our operating budget and to pay for other things as part of our annual budget process. And therefore, earnings from that, if they're flowing in a free cash, are just going to disappear. I'm not accusing anybody of doing anything. I'm just saying that you know we have a, a tendency to say, OK, free cash goes here, and this is what we're going to do with it. Mm -hmm. right? And it, would, it seemed to me, if, we want to utilize the very as an investment and generate capital to which we will we ought to be putting it somewhere other than free cash. Sure, you know, and I'll just note that we don't we don't um, per se use free cash or appropriate free cash towards the operating budget. Um, typically, we appropriate free cash and put it into the stabilization fund or the debt capital stabilization fund or we buy, um, you know, according to the capital plan, it calls for a certain amount of free cash, so those type of things, but not for the annual operating budget. But I do understand what you're saying. It's better to have it set aside. Um, but similar to what we did for the PFA, which was the employee and employer health insurance savings, we knew that those funds were going to turn into free cash, and we, as soon as free cash was certified, those funds were set aside, you know, and then we knew what we had for free cash going forward. So, you know, if we had a plan in place um, and, you know, we knew what we needed to set aside to pay for debt service, I, I think that that is doable as well. So, you know, it's something that can be discussed. Mr. O'Leary? Yeah, I, I think it's uh, extremely important with the money that uh, uh, the proceeds from the sale of J.T. Berry uh, remain segregated and not um, easily uh, obtained Agreed. through um, the normal processes of things. Uh, because again, it, it's, it's a windfall, it's a one-shot deal, and, and I think we have to be very uh, cautious as to how it gets expended and how the interest earned on it is going to be expended and what it's going to be invested in. Um, suggestions such as this one are things that we should be should be looking at uh, doing with it. So uh, I'm all in favor of uh, earmarking the the interest earned on these on these funds 
for specific capital projects or economic development purposes rather than uh, just having it uh, convert to free cash. Mm -hmm. So uh, to me, this is one of the big questions um, as to how we're going to finance if we decide to, if the majority of the board decides to move forward with, the, with this type of uh, an acquisition. Um, I also think that we need to have some um, discussion in relation to just paying cash out for it. To me, if you pay the cash out, your principal amount is gone and diminished, and it's not going to be there. Um, I know, th I know that there's a, a cost associated with borrowing, but by the same token, if we have an opportunity to um, retain some of the principal for a generation to come, you know, I think we need to take a look at that. Yeah. And right. uh, you know, so that I, I'm, I'm not uh, too enamored by the idea of just, you know paying cash money for this uh, acquisition if it comes to fruition. Uh, and I think we need to look at the funding source. Again, we have a revenue stream in relation to interest on, on the funds that have uh, been deposited. And uh, if we earmark those and uh, can retain more of the principal for 10, 20, 30 years from now, I think we'll be doing a, a greater service to the community rather than just obtaining the asset, paying for it, and not having any debt on it. Again, that's a discussion for another day in the not too distant future. Um, additionally, in relation to the specific uh, proposal here, as far as you know, whether we're going to make an offer or not, you know, I, and, and again, this is through no fault of our own. It's just a, an opportunity that's presenting itself. You know, my concern is is that we're, um, we're forced into a position because of the opportunity, you know, to uh, potentially be making a decision that hasn't fit into any, any long-range plan. I mean, we've already just formed a committee to look at our facilities needs. Um, you know, how would this fit in? We don't know. I mean, we haven't done it yet. Um, we have uh, MAPC plans, and uh, we have uh, the CPC uh, who's putting uh, together their master plan, which calls for you know certain uh, parts of their proposal to maybe make a municipal center, you know, how does this fit in or do we want it to fit in? So uh, one of the challenges that we have and that I've been wrestling with over the last few weeks since this opportunity has come up is, you know, do we let the opportunity pass, a, pass us by, you know, or do we jump at it and try and fit it into a plan that hasn't been established yet? Uh, so those are some of the things that we're going to be talking about as a board, you know, in the next few hours, I guess and the next few days and weeks, depending upon, you know, what action the board takes and if the board decides to uh, make an offer, you know, and its negotiations take place, you know, uh, these are the things that we have to decide in, in short order, and then we'll have to have a town meeting. Um, you know, if the board decides to do something just in relation to town meeting, what are you talking about, within two months? Uh, uh, depending upon the nature of the board's decisions regarding an offer, but yeah, I mean, in, in the next few months. Well, you know, I would think, I don't know what we need for time to lead time, but probably, you know, January, February, right? Two months, right? And again, that depends upon if we make the offer, if the owner is willing to wait okay, that wait. long also, wait Should that long for a town meeting the decision that they hope would be favorable, because without favorable town meeting action, it doesn't come to fruition either. So, um, but anyway, I just... Uh, just want the public to know that, you know, I'm wrestling with it a couple of fronts. One is how we're going to finance it. Two, does it fit into any plan that, that we really uh, uh, haven't completed a study on yet? And, uh, you know, and while it is a terrific opportunity and it is a unique, a unique parcel, um, you know, we have, we have some quick decisions to make and uh, it's going to cost us a lot of money um, if we decide to move forward. So. Uh, that being said, I look forward to the, the discussion with the, with my colleagues here and bring it to some sort of a, a conclusion. Ms. Ms. Rourke, then Mr. Masseri. 
I just wanted to clarify that this, the proceeds from uh, the Barry property sit in a receipts reserved fund, which requires an appropriation at town meeting in order to expend any of those funds. Um, the only piece of uh, the 19 million and change that was invested is 5 million. 5 million sits in a 24 month CD. Um, the rest of the funds uh, are in a money market account, earning probably two and a quarter, two and a half um, at, at this point in time. That was the decision to make was to invest five million of the 19 and change. Uh, those interest earnings are general fund interest earnings. So we cannot, you know, use the 19 million for anything that we want to. It, it has, you know, restrictions. Um, it can only be used for capital projects or to pay for debt service that has a life of five years or longer. So, you know, we still are required to go to town meeting for an appropriation. And those funds are segregated. They're not part of the general fund. The only piece of those, uh, of what we are uh, receiving from those funds is interest income that is general fund income at this point in time. Unless, um, and I will do some research and ask our outside auditor as well, if we can um, put interest earnings to that type of fund or if we need to look into moving the funds into a, a standalone fund, still requiring appropriation, but that can earn its own interest earnings similar to a stabilization fund, which have to um, be in an interest bearing account and earn their own interest income that doesn't become general fund income. So those are just the two differences. Um, and only the piece that is going towards the operating budget as part of our revenue plan and estimated receipts is the interest income on the five million of the CD as well as whatever the you know 14 million and change is earning that is part of general fund income. Mr. Masseri. I guess my question is, uh, why is only five million invested? I will, I will look to Chairman Prisco. When we were going through the budget last year, it was that discussion, we went through that discussion and the board felt more comfortable not investing the entire thing. We said, let's try five million and then we'll see, we'll proceed down the road, we'll see how it goes. I think people were afraid to take that risk to invest that much money right up front. But well, when we as talk we go about through investing, the budget, I'm a, uh, what are we investing in? Just a certificate of deposit earning 2.75% uh, for 24 months. We act, and we do not have to wait until the 24 months are up. We right. receive the interest income monthly for that CD. Right. right. The remaining 14 sit in a money market account, and I believe the last time I checked, it was two and a half uh, percent. Um, I'm not sure if it's two and a quarter. You know, it does fluctuate somewhat, but it's in it's in the two range for the 14 million. Um, and you know, in the coming weeks, we are developing um, uh, investment policy for the board to approve, so we can have further discussion. Sure. You know, in regards to not just these funds, but other funds that we have. And this is the season where we discuss everything, all our finances and. Certainly, if you want to explore doing something different than what's been structured by the. Um, no, I just needed to be reminded of what we didn't want to do. Sure. Did. Absolutely. Mr. Schultz. Yeah, I just think for the public out there, it's important that we state a couple of things. That obviously, if we do decide to make an offer on this property, it's going to be dependent upon we can find a price that makes sense for the town of North Reading, first and foremost. Secondarily, I think it's a bigger issue out there. Things like a fire station, sewage and commercial areas, a senior center, senior housing. These are things as a town we've neglected to do for years. We need to invest in infrastructure. We haven't spent in infrastructure for years in this town, and now we're at a situation where we have to spend on all these different projects because we didn't do them in the past. Every year you wait to do any of these projects, the more it's going to cost you. Construction costs, I have never really seen them go down. They generally go up. I agree with my colleague, Mr. O'Leary. I'm not a fan of spending the Pulte money on, or JT Berry money on one-off projects. I think there should be a blend of financing and using the investment income. But I think as a town, we got to start attacking some of these different things. I, I think there's an opportunity for, you know, I know we're looking at something in IRP, but if that doesn't work out, maybe you have a senior center attached to this property. It's another use that I think could be used, especially since there's access to a side road that you wouldn't have people coming in off 28. 
I just think we have to look at these big picture items a little more. And we can't keep kicking the can down the road with these major infrastructure items that we need to have. They're just going to cost us more money. Um, but at the same token, I do agree again with Mr. O'Leary. We shouldn't be spending the JT Berry money on one-off projects. It needs to be a blend between using some cash, but financing and using the investment income. And as Mr. O'Leary, I think correctly puts, saving that principle for generations to come. I think that's very important. Yeah, but we got to keep buying. We're very limited on what we can do with that principle. Yeah. So, it's a blend. Yeah. Yeah. We have work to do. And there's no yeah. doubt about it, and that's why we'll go into executive session. We'll we'll have that next phase of discussion, and we'll see where we go from there. So, if there. Is there any other questions? I'd take a motion, but I would ask the board, oh, Mr. Larry. Yeah, I, I have, I have I guess a couple more comments. What, what, I take a little bit of exception as to what was uh, just stated by my colleague here that, you know, things have been neglected over the years past. It hasn't been a question of neglect. I mean, a lot of the, uh, the issues that have been, uh, that are on the table today that are before us, the, uh, uh, the needs that we have, have been the same needs that we've had for, for 25 or 30 years. It's a question of affordability and how we're going to um, tackle it. It is something that we could realistically do. And every year, you know, these boards, previous boards and this current board has set, uh, established a set of priorities in relation to the revenue stream. And, you know, as much as we would like to do certain things and invest in certain things, we didn't have the revenue to do so. Um, so it's not as though any of these ideas have been lost in the past because they haven't. They've still been, I mean, I've been sitting here a long time and there haven't been a lot of new ideas. There have been some opportunities, but there haven't been a lot of new ideas and uh, new needs uh, identified uh, or desires uh, put forth that we'd like to see and like to have done and be able to provide in the way of services uh, to our community. It's just a question of affordability. Um, but when we talk about priorities, you know, and what we're talking about now is an opportunity that's being presented to us. And does this opportunity fit into any of the priorities? Or how high are those, has, does this opportunity, where does it fit in the priorities that we've had? You know, and you, know, you look at our recently approved strategic plan. You know, we're talking about uh, analyzing our facilities, you know, doing a, an analysis of all of our facilities needs. But at West Side Station, wasn't clearly identified as a priority because it comes down to affordability. You know, uh, centralization of uh, mechanics, you know, for uh, DPW, public safety and school, you know, all under one roof. We've talked about that over the years. It's just a question of we didn't have necessarily all the space out of the DPW garage to do so. Uh, so from a prioritization standpoint, you know, where does this fall and, and does it leapfrog some of the other priorities that have already been identified by the Capital Improvement Planning Committee and uh, from a, a long-range uh, standpoint and from our immediate immediate needs. So this is what we have to wrestle with. So, um, and we'll do that over the, the next few minutes or hours, I suppose, and eight days. So, but I do take some exception to the fact that we haven't neglected to do anything. You know, we have talked about it. We have looked at um, the different needs and desires of the community. And I can't think of anything that we haven't done that we were able to afford to do sewerage, and neglected to do. Sewerage years ago? Well before anyone else on this board? There were opportunities back in the 70s yeah. to tie into the South Essex Sewerage District. I was the moderator at the time. You know, but a conscious decision was made by boards and town meeting not to do it. Yeah, and now it's been kicked and then, down the road to 2018. We're water reservoirs, okay, built up in the Swan Pond area. We acquired land and then decided not to do it. And when I say we, it isn't this board. It was the community as a whole through town meeting that takes those types of actions. It's not just the board. The boards, previous boards, brought these actions and ideas to town meeting and it was determined not to do it. The community as a whole said, not now. So again, it, was, it wasn't a decision of a board because most of these ideas were brought forth to the community yep. for consideration. And they was, it was determined at that time, because for affordability reasons, not to do it. Or who's going to be in charge, who's going to be in, in, in control of what was going to happen inside of the confines of our board. So 
Mr. O'Leary, before I recognize Mrs. Herbert, I just want to tell you that in the strategic plan, though, we did talk about 2019 to find some option for the fire department. We've been talking about that. It's in the plan. It's been documented in the plan. So I think the timing is right. You know, we said we were going to do it. So uh, it's not like we were saying, oh, the fire department something. Yeah, but we didn't say we were going to set aside money to go and, and acquire property mm -hmm. or well, purchase again, a piece of property or, or take something by eminent domain in order to meet this need. It's a, it's we, a need that's we, been identified. We said we were going to identify an option to satisfy this okay. need. You're right. The details of it, no, we haven't gotten there yet. But it is in the plan. I don't want people to think that you know this is something we're pulling just, out of the sky. I was, look, I was looking for it. It's, it's it. in there. So, Mrs. Hilbert, please. Um, Abby Hilbert, Chairman, North Reading Finance Committee. Uh, with regards to this project, uh, potential project, or purchase, possibly leapfrogging other items on the list, uh, the capital um, committee is and the capital uh, statement of purpose um, as uh, agreed to by the Board of Selectmen very clearly stipulates that uh, public safety uh, is a priority on capital projects. The other, the other piece of it is that there are tremendous needs that the current firehouse has that, to be quite honest, are, are really not uh, f financially prudent to address in, in the, the uh, current firehouse. In addition, uh, with new fire, new fire trucks are really too big for the current firehouse, and it's very hard to even fit them in because they're longer than the space allows. So, to be quite honest, I would suggest to you that uh, if one of the purposes of this building should the Board of Selectmen decide to make an offer is to do something uh, by way of a more centralized fire department, I think that that makes an enormous amount of sense in a number of ways. And the other thing I'll point out to add on to what you're saying is you, where our needs are growing in the fire department, the calls increasing, we're going to hire more people in the future. We do not have a woman's room in this bio, in this fire station. That has to be addressed. We can't continue to just go out and hire men. We should be able to open up and hire whomever is qualified to do the job. And I think that has to be a priority now. That so. was part of what I meant when I said that uh, the list of needs of the current firehouse are really not reasonably met yeah. because of the I just added one more to specifics. I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> but I'm not going to apply. <laughs> Mr. Gilbert. I, I do feel that it's important, <clears throat> and I'll only speak for myself in my four years as town, as town administrator. So uh, I have never allowed the gender of a candidate for any position to influence whether or not they're hired. We, our hiring is done through a civil service process. Candidates are ranked. Let's, and they're higher let's, depending. Let's not overthink what I'm yeah, saying. No, I okay. just want to make sure that let's, I just want to correct it. That's don't all. analyze, <laughs> overanalyze what I'm saying. But it's a true fact. And for our ability to, as we talk about the growth of our public safety departments, we've also talked about hiring. And hiring is for the best qualified candidate. And best qualified candidate could be of any sex. Sure. And I'm just saying that today our facilities, if we do hire a female, we would have to make, make immediately, immediately mo major modification in that fire station to ensure that they get the right facilities to do their job. And that we don't have. That's and correct. that's just another point that's absolutely of why correct. I feel there is an urgency that we take this opportunity now to acquire a building to satisfy this fire station at some point. And again, anything we're talking about now won't happen for at least two years. Because as you know, it takes, it's a process, town meeting, Design, proving the design, finding the funding, working with the finance director to make sure that we have all that locked down to make sure we can fund it, and then going to town meeting again to get the funding, and then doing the structure and building it, and so on and so forth. It's a long process. So if we, we, we keep waiting and we miss out on this unique opportunity, we're going to be building it somewhere, and we we'll certainly could be paying twice as much. Well, Mr. Schultz, and then I'd like to move to a second. I just want to say to the public too: we're only dealing with this issue right now because this particular property came on the market. Yeah, yeah we're not everybody's rushing to buy a fire station. It just this happened to come on the market. That's why we're having a special meeting tonight. It's not like we're rushing out to buy a fire station. No, I think Mr. O'Leary articulated that perfectly in his uh, first comments. So, um, you know, we're not nobody's holding a gun to our head to go do this. 
Okay. Yes. Please. Hi, Lauren Dari, North End Transcript. I have one question. Um, you've mentioned the um, the building, the property have an office space. When you say that, do you mean with attached to the garage or the little building that used to be used as the self-serve watering place? For the Mr. Business? Gilberto, would you please? Sure. Through you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so the, it's actually both. There is a significant size, uh, what I, I would say is a significant size office space directly yeah. attached to the uh, industrial building to the rear of the property, but there is also a one-story uh, office slash retail building at the front of the property as well. Maureen, do you have the details of the building? Um, he gave it to me when I arrived. Okay. I have looked at it. If any questions, certainly reach out to Tom Administrator or myself. I believe a lot of the details are in that. <coughs> to the podium, please. Yes, please. And I'll be brief. Rich Walner, 57 Lakeside Boulevard. I share uh, Mr. O'Leary's concern about um, taking the larger view, looking at the bigger picture. The MAPC study is imminent. Um, you can even preview it, and I would encourage you to do that over the next week or two while you're thinking about this. Um, we have a very unique time in our life to look at how we um, look at our future. The schools are in great shape. They're not in need of money. This is really a time to step back and look at the overall picture. We have a great opportunity. We have some money from Pulte, and um, we have a chance to create a downtown municipal area. I'm not saying that outweighs the needs of the fire department. I'm not saying it outweighs any of those things. But if, if you're not aware of the issues, then you're a little bit um, shooting in the dark. And I personally am a planner. I like to have a plan ahead of time. Uh, if that costs a little bit more at the end of the day, that's OK. But a big plan is important. And even when we leave buildings behind, what do we do with those buildings? If we left this building behind, what will we do with this building? How does that fit into the chess game that we're playing here? So I encourage you to, nothing else, look at what the MAPC study has shown so far, get a view of that so you can kind of balance that out and uh, consider the chess sets all overall. And for me, I'm a patient person. If it costs a little bit more to have a better plan, it's, worth, it's always worth the exercise of doing that, personally. Thank you, Mr. Wilner. I'll take a motion for the executive session. Would you please, Mrs. Helbert, can you stay for executive session? Sure. And um, Ms. Carboni and Ms. Rourke, please. Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> I move to enter into executive session for the, it would be easy to just exclude a couple of people. That don't <laughs> 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 Mr. Okay. Chairman, I think personal. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to enter into executive session for the purposes of exemption six, real property, 217 Main Street, such discussions in open session will have a detrimental impact on the town and to admit the following people. Uh, Finance Committee Member Hurlbert, uh, Finance Director uh, Liz Rock, and uh, Assessor uh, Debbie Carboni. Second. I have a motion and a second. Mr. O'Leary? Aye. Mr. Masseri? Aye. Mr. Schultz? Aye. Mr. Manupelli and the Chair votes aye. We're going to take a five-minute break to allow Norcamp to break down. <laughs> 